Welcome back everyone. It's been a few days since I put out a video. I was out of town. So we're going to get right into the stock market technical analysis, starting off with broad market analysis. And then we'll just kind of jump around and look at individual ideas. Starting off with the triple Q's. So, you know, more rallying today. The market continues to rally. Uh, we're above the recent highs here on triple Q's, which is 382.85. You can see that we're continuing to hold above there. So we're, we, we are at all time highs. Don't really have any reason to short the market right now. I don't, I can't make a, I can't make a case to be short. Uh, and I, you know, in no sell signals, let's just put it that way. What, a couple things to watch is, you know, again, watch those former highs, watch for a break back below those former highs, about 382.75. Uh, but until, as long as we're holding above that, you know, I wouldn't really be interested in shorting. Looking at the PPO, we still have negative divergence, but if we continue up much more and we don't turn down soon, then we're going to burn through that negative divergence. So you'll see here on the RSI, let me zoom in here on the RSI. You can see that we are still trending down recently like this, but you can see the RSI is pointed straight up. All right, so right there, it's pointed straight up. So if we continue to go up, we're gonna burn through the negative divergence and it's gonna make a new high in momentum. And then we would no longer have that negative divergence. If we start to turn down soon, that will confirm the negative divergence. So again, if the RSI starts to turn down, the PPO starts to turn down, then we'll have a confirmed negative divergence and then we'll start looking for a short opportunity because we have, are at a new high here, new higher high in price and yet lower high in momentum as of right now. So let's, you know, I'm going to wait for that confirmation on negative divergence and then start look start to look for the next shorting opportunity. Uh, on the hourly, you know, we could probably track, you know, I've got this marked out right here. So I'd probably want to watch this trend line as an area uh, on the hourly and right now it's about that 377 area. So first thing to look for would be a break back below the former highs 80 area and then a break of this trend line here on the hourly chart for confirmation that we have another sell signal. But again, no negative divergence. Uh, we don't have confirmation on that negative divergence yet. We don't have a sell signal, no reason to short. So those are just things I'm looking for. And otherwise, you know, if you're long, I, you could just stay long that, you know, I mean, the market is continuing to move higher. So with with no sell signals, so that would be one option. SPY breaking to new all time highs, just continuing. So again, there it is. We're above the former high right here. And the former high sits at about oh, 454.20 or so. You can see we came down and tested it right there. We came down, tested it, it held and you know, bounced off of that. So until we break back below that level, uh, we're bullish. It's, you know, it's a bullish chart. We do have negative divergence. You can see that that's been building on the RSI and the PPO, but it's not confirmed yet. So we need to see these turn down. The RSI start to point down, the PPO start to point down, and that would confirm that we have a new divergent high. And then we'll start to look for a sell signal. But until I see that, there's no reason to short. Uh, at least the general indices. So that's all I see on those. Today was mostly about the small caps. You can see the small caps popped up today, almost 2.6%. We are at major resistance here. So there it is right there. IWM has been trading in this big sideways range all year long. Uh, bottom, you know, there's the bottom right in there. Top, it's right about 234.50. And we're pretty much right in that area right now. So you can see we were, we were rejected once, twice, three times. We're, we're going up to test it again. So, you know, if it breaks out, you know, it will be a breakout. So you do need to consider that as an actual breakout. But we'll want to just see what the chart looks like at that point in time. Uh, a breakout, you know, is, is officially a breakout until it is not. Uh, we do, you know, if we pop above it, I, I think it would make sense to pop above this, run a bunch of stops. There's, you have to understand this big sideways range has played out for over a year. So if you're short, then likely you're setting your stop 
loss up in here in this range. So the algos know that they're likely going to want to run up there and run a bunch of stops. And if you're and this is where you know longs that see this as a breakout will will you know potentially pile in and take that as a breakout. So that's one thing to watch for. And then what I you know what I'd be more interested in is if we get that failure back into the range. If you fail back into the range, that's likely a false breakout or a bull trap. And then we are likely to head uh, much lower. We still have negative divergence. So each new time we've made an equal high here, here, and here, those have all been divergent highs. And that's no different than where we're at today. We're making an equal high of those former highs, but momentum is less. We have less momentum um, or, or equal momentum. So we want to, if these start to turn down soon, then that will help confirm the negative divergence. And if it's a breakout, that happens when you have negative divergence in the momentum, It's there's a very high probability, it doesn't have to happen this way, but a much higher probability that you're gonna get a false breakout and it's going to fail and, and come back in. So doesn't mean it can ha you know has to play out that way. We could just continue higher in momentum and burn through these negative divergences and we would see a breakout. And in general, that would just be bullish across the board. Okay, let's get to gold. I don't know exactly. I had to take a break, so I don't know exactly where we left off. But gold, <clears throat> all right, so here's gold bullion. A couple of things I'm watching, all right? On the hourly chart for gold, we've got this uptrend line basically right here. It's coming off the lows, and we've just been kind of walking up this trend line. Now, we recently broke down uh, here October 29th, had a quick breakdown, but they've they've managed to recover it. So, so far, just a little bit of a false breakdown it's not impulsively bouncing off there, so we could, you know, my trend line could be off slightly. We could just be back testing for a move down, but we'll we'll really have to see. Gold futures uh, has a little bit of a different look. So here's this uptrend line on the hourly chart, clear uptrend line. There's your breakdown, and there's a back test right there. So until you, until we can recover this trend line, that is a back test. That is resistance. Uh, we could be heading lower. A couple things to note on the hourly or on the daily chart, we still have that bullish divergence on the daily. So we continued to drop and make lower lows in price, but it was much higher in momentum. So there's a divergent low. You'll see how we we're making a higher high in momentum. See how it's trending up. So we had it. That's your last divergent low. I think it's very, uh, I, I think it makes sense that we move higher. I am looking at this level, at least a move up to here, 1837. You can see that's kind of former, that's a good resistance. We got one, two, three tags of that. A move up there, that's where you should find resistance. And then a break above that, I think we're probably heading to all time highs. Uh, but until you, you know, until we do that, we'll have to watch for what's coming next. The miners look like they just put in a back test. And so a couple things on the miners. As I zoom in here, you'll see this is your bearish, uh, or sorry, your bullish falling wedge right there. So you see that wedge pattern that we made? That's a falling wedge. And as we started to head down towards the bottom of the wedge, we put in bullish divergence right here. See the bullish divergence. And we got a breakout right there. So there's your breakout. We ran up. <clears throat> A uh, pretty good size move from the breakout. You know, your breakout uh, was right there, and we ran up about six, you know, almost seven percent. Now it looks like we're coming in for a back test. We could go a little lower and do a full back test down here at 3077, but I would expect this area to hold as support. And I think that's a key area to watch. Another area also is 3134. And that's basically where we were at uh, today. We pretty much traded right down to that key level of support. As I roll out on the daily chart, you'll see this is a key area of resistance back here once, twice. And then once we were above it, it's been support once, twice, three times support. You know, a little bit of price action as we chop through it and run a bunch of stops. Uh, but that clearly was a stop rate as it rallied out of there. And yeah, you can see we dip below it again. We've recovered it and we're right back to it. So I think we're going to hold support right in this area and start and continue to move higher. Again, oftentimes when you get breakouts, you're usually at least going to come in for one back test. So it looks like that's what we recently did. And I think we're heading higher in the miners. 
And just to look at Newmont, you'll see here kind of the same pattern. You've got this bullish falling wedge pattern with bullish divergence down near at the lows. So we were building that. We broke out, there's a breakout, and we come in for a back test and we've held so far. So today, the buyer stepped in right at support, right at that trend line that was former support. And <clears throat> that's a key trend line. See, this is coming off of the August, you know, when since the miners went into correction, this has been a key trend line for this stock. You can see it was resistance, resistance, resistance. Then you finally break above and it's support right there support right here break below it run a bunch of stops with bullish divergence and then break above should hold the support right there so i think we we likely hit the low in this thing i mean we could have a day or two where we undercut it and chop down but i think we've likely hit the low and uh the buyer should be here we should start to rally from this point in time and that's pretty consistent across a lot of the miners. Some can move, maybe move a little bit lower. The, some, I think, are right at support. Here's one Agnico Eagle, bullish falling wedge here. Down here at the lows, put in bullish divergence. You can see right there, making lower lows in price, higher lows in momentum. We then break out and we come in for a back test. So looks like this is the area of support. You know, we might want to trade here for a couple days likely into the Fed meeting. And then from there, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I do think gold is set up to rally after the Fed meeting. I don't know if it's going to be before the Fed meeting, but I think we're, we're set up to rally after the Fed meeting. So maybe they'll come out and, you know, kick the rate hike hikes back or, or talk about less of a rate hike, you know, less, they're not going to do a rate hike but they're likely going to do a reduction of their bond purchasing program. Maybe it's a smaller reduction than what the market's thinking. I, I don't know, but the chart looks like it's set up bullish. We've got bullish divergence. We've got breakouts of bullish patterns. We're at a back test. This is a key. This is an objective area to buy the stock basically right here at support. Another long trade idea that I like is this Kraft Heinz KHC. Again, this one uh, earnings is out of the way. So we don't have to worry about the earnings risk as much. We've got bullish divergence on the chart. So that's been building for a while. So each new low has been a divergent low. We uh, didn't quite get one right here, but basically as we were falling in price right here, the momentum was moving higher signaling bullish divergence. We then got a breakout, but we've just traded sideways. So you can see this big sideways price action here. So we need to break the upper end of this support zone, or it's really a resistance zone. Uh, you know, we'll just move this up here to give it the benefit of the doubt and call that resistance zone 3780. We'll break above that. I think it's likely we're off to the races to run up and do a gap fill all the way up here at, you know, 47, $48, somewhere right in there. Big gap from back in 2019 right there that has not been filled yet. So I think we're likely going to run up and fill that gap. Looks good so far. We're still holding, you know. Uh, just trading sideways. Another long trade idea, love. This is Southwest Airlines. Looks like we've got a bullish breakout today. So we have bullish divergence on the chart. You can see that we basically recently made a new lower low right here, just dip below the former low back there. But see the momentum, how it's a higher low right here on the PPO. And it is a uh, higher low on the RSI as well. Also, they're, they're turning up. So there's the RSI turning up, confirming that bullish divergence. And then the PPO is starting to turn up. You want to look for a crossover uh, on the PPO. Look for these two lines to cross. Uh, again, if you don't have PPO, you can use MACD. Uh, they're very similar. But you want to see a crossover right there. That would help confirm. We Today, you know, looking at the hourly chart, we had a downtrend line here in love right there. And looks like a pretty, you know, pretty impulsive breakout today. We've got some resistance right there at 49.24. So at this point in time, I would probably be looking to go long on a back test of the trend line. So let's say we sell down and hit this trend line, maybe even put in a new divergent low. But from above this trend line, that's an objective area to go long this thing. Or if you don't get that and it wants to just break higher, I'd look for a breakout above. 49.25 right there a nice impulsive breakout that that um you know you want to wait for that hourly candle to close above there and impulsively 
So you can see that was kind of former, this is kind of a former pivot area there at 49.23. I think it's likely, you know, a move above there could be a breakout. We could be moving higher. So something to look for on that one. Again, not an area that I want to go long right here. But, you know, if we were going to get that back test, I'd be interested in going along there or a break above. Okay, that's all I really have for today. I don't see anything else that's too too interesting. I uh, Commodities, The I, I did look at some of the commodities. Wheat seems to be running. Corn looks like it's starting to run again. Commodities, to me, seem like they're likely in a long-term bull market. Gold has lagged that. And I know there's that's been all over YouTube about gold lagging. But I think gold oftentimes leads the commodities trade uh, and the inflation trade. It'll lead. So gold's just been in a, a bull market correction for the last eight months or so. Uh, and I think it's likely going to come out of that correction and lead the next leg higher. I don't know for sure, but as far as I can tell, the charts are still set up bullish. So as long as they remain bullish and nothing changes in the charts, I, I still think that's likely the best trade uh, going into the end of the year is is a gold gold mining long trade and again everything in this channel is just my opinion no recommendations here it's just what i see in the charts and how i'm trading it so thanks guys leave me a thumbs up on your way out check out the stock market technical analysis course link in the description below and i will catch you guys on the next one bye